Why do they do this? Melting metal is not forging. Hey guys, not in the forge today. I'm in my living room. I'll be reacting to some uh, blacksmithing in movies. See if it's legit or not. A little bit of my background. I've been studying blacksmithing for about five years now. I've been an apprentice with the ABS, the American Bladesmith Society, for about, I think, four years now. A little bit of experience. Not an expert by any means. Still learning every day. Got my coffee. Let's do this. First one's gonna be from the first Iron Man movie, when Tony Stark's making his first suit in a cave. Okay, first off, he's got a great hammer swing. You see a lot of swinging in movies, and it's just not how a blacksmith would swing a hammer. Now, Robert Downey Jr. definitely practiced for this role. Looks great. Okay, the steel's not very hot, so he's probably doing like a cold forging type of thing, where the steel's not glowing, it's like right on the verge of being there, but you could still move it. Um, you're, you're not going to be moving the steel a lot. You don't, you don't have to get the steel yellow hot every time. And I mean, come on. Just the fact that he's doing this in a cave with no technology or anything is just... I, I absolutely love it. Stranded, and he's got to make a freaking suit of armor in a cave. Badass. I wouldn't call that a quench. It wasn't hot enough for a quench. The steel he's using probably isn't high carbon steel. It's probably just mild steel. Mild steel is not going to harden no matter how hot you get it and cool it. So you have to have the carbon in order for it to harden. So what he's doing right there is probably just cooling the steel down. That, that looked really good. They probably had actual hot steel and put in water. All right, so Iron Man 1, legit. Very accurate stuff, the hammer swing, techniques he's using. I give Iron Man 1 a A+. Plus. Next movie we're checking out is A Knight's Tale. Great movie, Mr. Uh, Heath Ledger. Man, he was such a good actor. But I promise you I will, just as long no! as I... No! Money! Excuse me. Cash first, no promises. Gone. Ah, Alright, looks like he's trying to get his armor fixed. Cracked pretty good. Excuse me, sir. I... You might try the ferret. A woman? Beggars cannot be choosers, my lord. Yeah, blacksmiths were really the heart of a town. They did everything. They'd make nails, they would make chains, they did a lot of basic things, not just knives and swords and weapons. Uh, they did a lot of a lot of everyday things. So yeah, this is pretty legit what they're showing. They're showing a lot of I mean they're just doing basic stuff. That guy was shaping some, he's making some sort of Kind of like some sort of spring, something, I don't know. Excuse me. Don't work for free. And I can't joust with broken armor. Your problem, not mine. Each drop of this sweat has a price on it. She's working on a horseshoe. I'll be, I'll be honest, I'm not a, I don't have a lot of experience with farrier stuff, horseshoes. I mostly do knives and blades and things like that. So, I'm not sure what the process is for a horseshoe, but that steel does not look hot. Well, just as well. They told me I was daft for even asking. Where that anvil is, it's so high up. I don't know if that's normally how farriers do it, but she's holding it, like, up here at her, like, chest level, which is very high. Normally, an anvil is going to be about your waist. The rule of thumb for an anvil height you put your arms at your side, standing, and where your your knuckles, wherever it touches, that's where your anvil should be. 
because the whole point of your hammer swing is you're lifting it up and you're you're basically letting the hammer fall and you're just kind of guiding it you're not really trying to you're not forcing it down or anything so you want that height you want the extra height so that your hammer has the most energy when it hits the metal yeah she is not doing anything to that horseshoe i don't know what they were trying to do here but she is just hitting steel <laughs> Okay, there was a little sizzle. That could have been Hollywood sizzle, because the steel didn't look very hot, and they didn't show it. All right, Knight's Tail. Looked pretty good, legit, except for her swinging on the anvil about chest height. That's just too high for an anvil. Farriers, let me know in the comments if that's an actual thing farriers do. I have no idea. So if anyone can let me know, please do. A Knight's Tail, everything they showed, legit. <laughs> I'd give it a A minus. I love that they showed the actual everyday blacksmithing that normal, that would actually happen in a town like this in this period. Yeah, other than the one thing of her anvil height and the cold steel, everything else looked great. All right, next scene's gonna be from Conan the Barbarian, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Huge Arnie fan. Get to the chopper. I'll be back. All right, let's check out this classic. Why? Why do they do this? I can't stand when blacksmithing scenes, forging scenes, when they melt the metal. Melting metal is not forging. That's a big pet peeve of mine. All right, first off, you can melt iron and cast it, but it's a specific type of iron that has a lot more carbon in it than what blade making steel has. That extra bit of carbon makes it so that it's easier to cast with, easier to work with when, when it's molten. Hollywood, what are you doing? Okay, the music is pretty freaking epic. That's a pretty good looking sword. Okay, no, they are going to hit it. They're going to forge it a little bit. Okay, that looks like a stump. So his anvil that he's using is made of wood. Now, that's definitely not the best option. But if it's all you have, it could work. Now, you're going to lose a lot of energy. The anvil is supposed to reflect all of your hammer striking energy back into the steel. So you're basically working the steel from both sides, not just the hammer side, but the hammer side and from the anvil. So having the wood on the bottom instead of the anvil would mean you're going to lose a lot of that reflective energy. It's going to get absorbed into the wood. Is it impossible to forge a blade like this? No. Is it ideal? No. An anvil is the best hitting surface, for sure. Not the Harbor Freight anvils. Those are crap. You want a good anvil? Go to Centaur Forge. Centaur Forge has a great variety, great website. I'm not sponsored by Centaur Forge, just a fan. Ooh. Okay, that's pretty cool. That is an actual viable way to force air into their kind of forge that they're using, which is a charcoal or coal. That is legit, I love that. That's the best thing I've seen in this scene so far. Okay, it's not all the way hot. When you quench a blade, you want it to be a very even heat all the way through. So the whole sword should be glowing the same color, not like this right here where it's about the top half of the sword. So when he quenches it, only the top half of the sword is going to get hard, which is not what you want.
Quenching it in snow. Okay, quenching it in snow. Could it work? Probably not. The reason is, you stick the hot sword in, it's gonna melt all the snow around it almost instantly. And then there's not gonna be anything in contact with the sword, because it's gonna be air. So that is the reason you use oil. Even when you quench a blade in oil, you have to move the blade around a lot, because there's this thing called a vapor jacket that forms. Because the blade's so hot, it is literally making the oil very close to the blade, it's making that turn into vapor. So what happens is if you put the hot blade in and you just let it sit there, that vapor is actually gonna insulate the steel from the rest of the oil. So if you don't move the blade around and introduce it to new oil, it's not gonna harden nearly as good. All right, Conan the Barbarian. The best part of this scene was the bellows that they showed, how it was man-powered, made out of leather and wood, I think it looked like. So that's that was the only legit thing. All in all, I would give Conan the Barbarian a... I'm gonna give it a C plus. I mean, it's got one of my biggest pet peeves in it. I'm taking off points for the melting the metal and the quenching in snow. If you guys haven't seen this classic movie, definitely check it out. Alright guys, that's all the movie scenes I got for you right now. Let me know if there's any other TV shows, movies, or anything I should check out with blacksmithing in it. Thanks for watching.